Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Sunday special. On these episodes, I basically go through the market and I do a technical breakdown as well as share some of my top trade ideas for the week ahead. So today is Sunday, uh, August 16th, 2020, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the hottest markets, at least the ones that I see. And I'm going to be sharing my personal uh, interest on some of these charts and some of the technical breakdowns with them. So the ones that we're going to hit today, uh, I've, I've picked out a list here down below. Uh, you can see uh, we've got Euro dollar, the S&P 500. We've got gold, we've got the uh, the pound dollar, and we've got silver, which will be interesting to talk about. And we've got a bonus market, which is going to be AUD USD. So if you want to see any of those, stay tuned and do me a favor before we get too far into this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up down below. It does show support and helps with the YouTube algorithm and uh, you'd be doing me a favor. So thank you very much. And let's go ahead and get into this thing. So let's go ahead and start with Euro dollar on this guy. So uh, basically, uh, Euro dollar last week was very, very consolidated. So we've been watching this Euro dollar move for some time, because if we actually scroll out, if we start on this daily chart for a moment, uh, actually even the weekly, notice how we really had a shift in this overall direction of the trend here. So we had this downtrend for many, many months. In fact, uh, inside of the VIP group that I offer, we've been short on uh, Euro USD for this entire move, making profits and just catching some of the moves there. So it's been fantastic. Uh, but everything has to come to an end at some point, I suppose. And now we see the Euro dollar really taking its move to the upside now. Uh, one little speculation point that I have here is that because the interest rates have changed and the dynamic between these two currencies has caused the carry trade to kind of break down. If you don't know the carry trade, it's basically holding one position uh, and then you know against another currency and basically it pays or or deducts swaps from you. You may have seen swaps on your broker before. Well, it, for a very long time, if you held uh, EU short, right? If you were selling EU, you actually held this and got paid positive swaps every uh, every day. So at the end of the market, you would get paid a small amount of money uh, for holding that short position, which for a long time was one thing that I was really enjoying. I was cashing out on that one. But here's the thing: everything, as I mentioned, everything good has to come to an end. We saw those currencies. Uh, uh, both of these currencies become uh, you know, stressed out with all of the pandemic situation and lower interest rates in the US dollar, which was really the big catalyst for uh, that positive carry trade. So now we've actually seen that shift the other direction. We've seen the US dollar uh, become very weak recently and, and henceforth we've seen the euro rise uh, substantially. So as we rise here though, there comes a point where things can get a little bit too stretched in my view and I think that euro USD is probably due for a healthy pullback. I've talked about this for a few weeks now and you know, I know I get I get comments every time that I'm not instantly correct about something that you know I'm an idiot. But uh, and who knows, maybe I am. But the idea here is that I think that Euro USD after this consolidation point, I do think that there is a pretty good chance that we do see some more pullback here, uh, even for the bulls, right? Even even if this market is still very bullish, I think that it is most likely that bulls are waiting for some sort of dip, some sort of significant pullback if they're going to continue this upward trend. Uh, so where could we be seeing that? Well, we've got this daily chart pulled up for a reason here. You can actually see that this level uh, here looks pretty significant to me. So we've got this previous resistance, previous resistance. If we were to start to see this trend the other way for a little bit, it's not out of the question that we could see a nice pullback to a nice round level like that, uh, where we've got that strong level of support waiting. In that case, I may be looking to be a bull here on EURUSD, as again, things have really shifted, the tide has shifted to the upside. Uh, but in the time being, I think that this consolidation could lead to some further downside, and there may be some trade setups here. So how could we uh, look for opportunities in this? Well, I'm going to give you my personal setup that I like with, with Euro dollar, which may hit this week, may not hit this week, we will see. But the idea I like is getting long on the retest here of this structure with stops underneath that point. So very simple uh, concept here, basically waiting for this previous resistance to come back into uh, play here if we were to see a sell-off, looking for some potential upside play looking for the continuation of this overall trend that we see. Uh, a lot of times what you're gonna see in a trending market is that there are bursts of sprints to the upside and then we get the healthy pullback. And then if the, if the buy train is still going, the next wave kind of hits. Well, for that next wave to hit, in my view, I think we need to pull back a little bit, and that's where I'd be interested in looking for some, uh, some pullback. So with that said, if we were to see that pullback, 
I like the idea of a target number one being this area, but also a target number two being this area. So a lot of times I get questioned, well, how do I take a trade like that? Uh, you can actually, my view is, uh, or the way I would do it, is I would just take two positions at this level, half size each. So let's say that you're trading, um, if you were trading 0.5 lots total, uh, you could do 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and then uh, you know put your stop for both there, uh, target for one, target for two. That's just how I would do it if I was looking at this trade. So we'll see if this one comes into play. Again, with all the trades that I'm talking about here, if I end up taking a trade personally, I will share it inside of the A1 trading community. It is a community that my company runs uh, where we've got moderators and that sort of stuff. And you can follow along with some of the trades that I am sharing as well as some of our other top traders and join our chat rooms and all sorts of good stuff. Check the link down below in the description if that is something that interests you. Um, so let's move on to our next market here. That was my top trade idea for Euro dollar. S&P 500 here is the next one. And the real big thing to talk about here is the fact that we are just hovering right around those all-time highs here on the SPX 500. This is the top 500 US companies. And what you can notice is that, again, we've really chugged all the way from this low point here. We've basically just, just shot up. We've just seen so much strong bullish pressure uh, off the backs of basically people you know, being optimistic about, okay, a vaccine is probably coming. We probably have uh, plenty of recovery to, to do here. Now, granted, companies, in my view, uh, are very much still going to feel the 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 pain or the wrath of this whole pandemic situation. Uh, and so I think that it is, in my view, a very careful time to be taking long positions because now the popular crowd has shifted from the short crowd over here. This was the popular thing to be doing was to short. And now it's really shifted. You can see it all over the news. It's it's a lot of people who are, you know, super bullish on the market and that sort of stuff. And and to me, it's a, it's a careful trade to try and be long right now, purely because we are at that all time high. We have a very significant difference in in our economy uh, here than we do now. And so in my view, I think that things are a little bit stretched to the upside and more likely to, to see some recovery, or sorry, some correction rather than a full-blown continuation to the upside. So that's my view on this uh, pair. So I just wanna be, just be, for those of you who are short-term trading this, my view is to be careful about trying to get long too aggressively because things could switch on a dime and we could see a very quick pullback to some levels of structure. Speaking of levels of structure, what about uh, this idea here? This is a pretty significant level of support. Uh, very possible that we could see a move right back down to that point. In fact, uh, it depends, you know, we, we are in a, a strong uptrending market at this point now, uh, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend shorting either, but if we were to see signs of weakness, that would be my top trade idea for S&P 500. So what I mean by that is if we were to start to see a break underneath a key level like this, which is basically this uptrend structure, that to me would be an interesting short sell to be in, uh, involved in. So I would be liking the point, the idea of if we see that sell pressure start, I'd like to catch some of the rebound and try and join some of it if we were to see some correction. Now, how far could correction go? Well, again, we've got this first level here that I talked about. We've also got some key structure here, which I also like this kind of zone right around here, right around that 2986 level uh, as kind of a pullback. I think that's about a 38.2% retracement from the Fib low to Fib high. I may be wrong, but it looks pretty close. So that's just my view. My, my favorite idea is looking for uh, basically a break underneath this structure, looking for shorts that may uh, have room to run down to this side. Of course, uh, stops would probably go over the highs in that case. So if we were to take a, a trade here, in my view, it would be right around here off the break, the retest, looking for that, putting the stop above that structure high because if price breaks to the top side, I'd rather not be trying to fight that. Uh, but if we were to see some downside kind of flow, that would be my favorite setup here for the S&P. So um, just a trade idea there. Next is gold. Gold we've talked about. I made a full-blown video about this one last week. Uh, had all the moving averages pl uh, put on the chart so I could show you guys just how strong this momentum overall is. We did see this candle here print, uh, but if you remember in that video I talked about, I still think that gold uh, likely does have some pullback. Although I don't necessarily think that that's ha has to be what happens, I do like the idea of looking for buy trades on a significant pullback here. So we've got some key levels here. For example, this level, uh, 1740, 1750 range. I think that in the video that I made, I actually, I'd recommend you go watch the full thing if you're interested in gold exclusively. Um, but I think that things could make their move back to the 1750 mark, uh, which gives us right around that nice 50% retracement on this move uh, and looking to buy into this consolidation zone here that previously 
uh, was a long period of basically back and forth before the explosion to the upside. I think that if price comes back down to that area, there's a pretty good chance bulls may want to hold that as a level of structure support. So uh, that's just my view there on gold. Uh, I've made the full video there and the trade ideas in that one. I'd recommend you go watch that for sure if you're interested in gold more. So next one is pound dollar. Uh, similar to how Euro USD is in consolidation mode, same with pound dollar. We've seen a lot of back and forth on the US dollar recently although it has been very weak overall. The weakness is kind of why we're seeing such a, a strong overall push on pound dollar to the upside. Now, again, I think that since we've, if you actually notice one thing here, so we had this with this top on the left, we had the top in the middle, and then we have had a few tops here on the right that have not been able to break past those levels. To me, this is still a consolidation zone, so we're not full blown out of the water, bearish or bullish yet. But if we were to see something like this this week, I like the idea of looking for the short setup here. So if we were to break underneath this structure, right, strong support, strong support, if we see that break, I'd like the idea of getting short just because we have plenty of room to kind of pull back, right? So within this bigger trend, there are plenty of opportunities in my view for the pullback if you see the right sort of setups that give you a decent risk to reward. I like the idea personally of being short around this area, putting stops uh, somewhere above structure there and looking for a target maybe back at support here, right? Just as an example. Um, so that's my view on pound dollar, favorite setup there for now. Uh, let's take a look at silver really quick. Silver, much like gold, has been on an incredible up streak. Uh, we've actually seen the 20 period moving average hold this level very strong uh, and very interesting to see that this thing, you know, basically rallied even harder than gold did. Uh, it will be interesting to see if this one this week wants to come back and test those highs. But much like gold, I think that uh, silver will likely follow. And I think that short term, there's probably due for some pullback here on these markets that have shown some sell pressure recently. Uh, very possible that sellers kind of just hold this for the time being. We'll see. Uh, just my view there on silver. And finally, our bonus one is AUD USD today. Uh, I did like this one because, again, a lot of going off that US dollar, we've seen the incredible rally uh, to the upside here on the Aussie dollar as the US dollar has fallen substantially. Uh, so as we rise here, I think that the long-term trends here on Aussie dollar, which have been down, at some point, I believe that we will get a bit too stretched and we'll probably see the continuation of this super long-term trend, right? Going back all the way from 2011, we've seen an incredible downtrend on this market. And so as we do pull back, uh, there are some levels here that I think are worth noting, specifically this one here, which we are just currently testing. Uh, this kind of key structural support there uh, became resistance held overall, and we are currently retesting that. Uh, now, long term, again, on the weekly chart, we've got this long term downtrending market that seems to have been broken, but it depends how you draw the trend line, right? Uh, there's That's the problem with trend lines is that trend lines can be pretty subjective, right? Because if we draw it like this, you can actually notice that we're kind of testing a key level there. We've broken out of this one, we are testing this one, and we're way far away from that long-term one. So it is important when you're looking at trend lines to understand that people view them differently and draw them differently. But I do like that one that we drew here. I think that this one is pretty relevant and we are currently testing a key level of structural resistance. I think it's very possible that this level could hold short-term as a level of resistance, especially as we near this horizontal level as well. So just my view, I think that there's some downside there on Aussie dollar, maybe short-term, uh, so we'll see how that one wants to play out. Uh, if we go head back to the daily chart really quick uh, and talk about this one a little bit more. So this idea at that resistance point, I think that you probably want to get out of the way if it decides to keep going. So I put stops somewhere uh, above structure there and looking for the pullback or at least some of the correction here. Very possibly could go back to retest this area here. I like this area roughly as a level of support to look for some pullback or correction to take a short sell. Uh, just my favorite trade setup there on Aussie dollar. We'll see if that one plays out. And again, any of these trades that I actually end up taking or decide to execute on my own personal accounts, I will share inside of the VIP group. You can find out information and use the promo code down below to get $5 off. Come join us, come trade with us and uh, get in on the action. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you back tomorrow.